Oh, my bun. <laughs> Hi guys, Kiki Love, Kiki Loves You. Welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is not a commentary channel. But damn it, let's talk about Meek Mill. Okay, so Meek Mill, if you haven't been paying attention to to any media or anything like that, Meek Mill, <laughs> he has an album called Expensive Pain. Uh, he took his album cover art and like wrapped it around a bus. I think they said it's actually been out since like early October, but it just made waves like this past week because of the fact that a man saw it out in California and it was raunchy, right? And so he's just going off and black women, is this what you want? And da, 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 like all this, like I'm not gonna insert the clip. If you wanna see it, I'll link it in the description box in case you wanna go watch it or whatever, but I'm not gonna post it in my video. It's been around enough, but if you haven't been paying attention, that's also fine. I'll leave it in the description box below. I'm not about to play it. So he does all that and everything. It's pulling triggers for me, so I want to talk about it. So before I talk about this, I've watched other content creators uh, talk about this subject, so I'm kinda gonna reference some of the things that they say, some research of my own and stuff like that if at any time you want to like skip to something feel free to you know scroll up the bottom of it like there's gonna be the chapters at the bottom like I always do for you to go ahead and get to what you want to know what you care about my opinion on or what you just want to comment on or whatever so that'll be there but Mademoiselle did a uh, video about it. I love her as well. Like, I love you, little ho. So I love her her content. I like to watch her videos. And you know, understand. I don't agree with her on everything. But on this particular matter, I do agree with her. Like, we all have problematic faves. <laughs> Nikki has been under fire. Beyonce has been dragged. My faves have definitely been dragged. And I was just like, damn. I get it. Even though they are our faves and things like that, they're not above approach. They are able to be human. They're nuanced. So there's going to be times where I'm like, yeah, I don't like that. And I'm going to also understand the fact that some people don't like that and they're going to make videos and going to talk about it and stuff like that. So we don't have to agree on everything, but we're going to talk about this anyway. So let's hop right into it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the video itself and how the man's like, black women, is this what you want? First, I would like to say as a black woman, no, this is not what we want by any means at all. We do not want to see this. But I also don't like his energy in that video. It was like, I feel like I'm not your security. Like, don't call at us. Like, oh, y'all want to be displayed like this? No, I don't want to be displayed like that at all. And it doesn't communicate concern. It really felt like you wanted me to be a bouncer for you. Because if he actually had concern for black women in the way we're presented, then it would have been black women shouldn't be plastered up like this. Black women should not look like, like you shouldn't put black women in a position like this. That takes a different type of posture it's a different position to take when you're talking about black women and you're trying to quote unquote you know protect this or, or our image or anything you're worried about your kids and that's understandable because he's a parent or whatever but don't try and act like you <laughs> care about us in the process baby you just worry about your children period and i get that so that takes me to the next thing which is what about the children now, a lot of people were like oh it's his tour bus he can do what he want da 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 Pipe down a little bit for a minute, all right, because this is actually a public bus. Yeah, let's say it's public transportation, sweetheart. This is not a tour bus. He don't have to be in the same state, let alone the same city as that bus, and it's going to run. So that is a problem. And a lot of people were like, oh, well, they've seen worse on cell phones. Well, not all kids have cell phones. In the situations where my mom did not want me to have access to certain things and I snuck and did it myself, kid, it is what it is. Um, but I knew I wasn't supposed to, to get to that. It's on a bus and parents might not even know that it's on a bus. They this is probably how they're figuring out this is on a bus because I didn't even know about this cover art because I don't listen to Meek Mill like this. It's on a bus already. You're forcing parents to have to have these conversations that they're not comfortable having with their four, two, three year old at this point. And then even beyond that, you're taking away their option and their choice in these conversations. Oh, well parents should be paying attention to what their, their child is listening to. And I'm just like, huh? The president of the RIAA, I think it's Record Industry Association of America. I might be wrong. I'll put what it's actually called here. The president of the organization said that it's not possible to listen to every song that comes out and give it some type of rating or approval. And this was like back when they were trying to get some labels put up and they was like, hey, it's not possible for me to be over all of this stuff. I'm not gonna hold y'all. That's just a lot of songs that come out. It don't make sense. So if he can say that and it's his job to be associated with music, what makes you think that every parent is gonna be able to listen to every song today, especially when we have SoundCloud? Like, it don't make sense. And even then, that's them listening to the music. It's not them having to see this visual image as they're on a bus. If some of y'all don't know, there are some kids that actually have to go to school and they have to ride the city bus. So if a parent, um, it's a lot of times like single parents, if they have their children riding the bus, if a parent has to be 
be at work before the child has to get on the bus. You know, you probably got that sibling that's older or whatever, and they'll watch people who's like 13 or whatever. So they're just going to the bus and they're just taking them and their siblings and they're just getting on the bus. The siblings could be any age because they have the sibling with them. Now you got that 13 year old in a position where they have to have this, or they're trying to have this conversation or saying like, just don't pay attention or whatever to their sibling about the situation. Y'all are robbing the parents the opportunity to actually have these conversations beforehand but then also you're forcing them to have this conversation and they're not ready to and they shouldn't have to but then also for me now this is the thing that i was like i was like i'm mad at the bus maybe so there are multiple people i'm mad at and one of the people i was like i think i'm mad at the bus because who approved this that was the biggest thing for a lot of us like who would approve this to be on city bus but then i did a little more research and i was like well what did they approve because let me tell you something. Los Angeles is more of like a mixed demographic. It's more of like a melting pot. So it's like only like 52% white people. It's not like it's like a very minute <laughs> like or anything like that. But in that area, it's more of a mix, a mixture of people. And even people from there will tell you, hey, we're really diverse. There's lots of you know different people here. So that's Los Angeles. But in Manhattan, theirs look like this, right? And then on some beach, it looks like this. You know what I'm saying? They're saying that the buses were also running in Philly. I didn't see any that said Philly, and I really hope not because Philly's demographic is majority black people. But you mean to tell me that in Los Angeles, you'll run a, a image with the black women on it, right? But in Manhattan, you won't put the black women on there? If art is art, then art should be anywhere, right? No, you're telling me that you know the demographic in Manhattan is damn near 60% white people and they wouldn't be okay with that. So instead you're gonna run it in Los Angeles. That's very telling. So it's like, I can understand somebody approving the one that's in Manhattan, but not the one that is currently running in Los Angeles. So if they were like, hey, we're gonna run the, the cover art for a Meek Mill and they were like, this is the one we have in Manhattan. This is the one we have on the beach. Cool, go ahead and put that on the bus. But then you pull a robot up and you put this on there? Because I'm gonna tell you who's not actually rapping the bus, whoever is over what you can put on the bus. They're not rapping. <laughs> They're not wrapping the bus, but they do need to be called on this situation because they do need to come and handle this They do need to be responsible for this whole situation boys Watkins brought up a very good um, Very good outtake if you want to know what some what a black man has to say about this that is uh, Educated I'm gonna say it go watch boys Watkins uh, breakdown of him talking about it with one of his colleagues and he was like, what if it had been a white man that said this? Like, he was like, what if Jack did this? Or what if Eminem did this? And they put this art, this, you know, this cover art up on a bus or as their cover art period, like, would, we, would it be okay? It's like, can we disrespect our women? But you can't, that's just not okay. Then somebody was like, well, if they were mixed, then y'all be saying that Meek don't, um, Meek didn't include y'all. Excuse me? Y'all know damn well what we meant when we wanted representation. That's not what women are talking about. When women saying they don't see themselves in the music videos, I see black women in the music videos. I see them twerking. I see you got them doing all this. I see them as extras or whatever in these videos and stuff like that. What they wanted to see black women as was love interests. They wanted to see them being spoiled in these videos like they have these women that are racially ambiguous. In this instance, we wanted representation for your preference. The women that y'all say that y'all prefer, the women that you will find on Meek Mill's Instagram, those are the women I would be okay seeing up there. It's like, well, this is what he likes. But no, there are dark-skinned black women in provocative positions and it was intentional and it was deliberate. I'm not about to play with y'all today. I'm not about to do this. So another concern or somebody said was, well, I see it all down my timeline. Who gonna tell them? So let me help you out. So your timeline is actually a reflection of you. So if you are seeing this on your timeline, it's because you're either following people that post stuff like this or you're following people that like stuff like this. You control your timeline. Now, if you go to your explore page, that means that you're seeing things that you have liked before or you follow a current trend for, or you're seeing things that people that you follow like. That's the type of stuff you're gonna get on your explore page. Some ads here and there, of course, but that's the type of stuff that you're gonna get because of the people. IG, Twitter, Facebook, all the birds of a feather flock together. They take that and they use it as their algorithm and that is how it's run. So if you don't want to see women twerking at your timeline, if you don't want to see ass and titties all over your timeline, stop following people that post ass and titty. Stop following people that be liking videos of people showing ass and titties. You won't see it on your timeline, but you're seeing it because it's the people that you are intending to see. It's the people you're seeking out and the friends that you keep. That's why you've seen that stuff on your timeline. Let's stop playing. So I also was watching a video by Nova B and she was talking about how it could have an effect on older women and I was like I was like ah, mm, ah mm, man 
And then I was like, oh, she has a point. It made me think about Girls Like Me by Jasmine Sullivan and her. Verse two reads, yeah, you gonna make me a gold digger. Maybe I should look like a stripper wearing fashion over dresses. All these dudes be so pressed and impressed with it. You leave me no choice. I can't do this good girl shit no more. So yeah, they talk about this. Like, and I get it why you can feel that way. And it's, it's true. Like it can definitely have an effect on women because like I said, a lot of the women that men be following on Instagram look a certain way. They act a certain way. Way. they dress a certain way they fit this whole thing that they're talking about well i see all, all this twerking and ass down my timeline yeah it's because that's the women that you're gravitating for and that's the women that you're attracted to and those are the women that you want to see in your timeline so you're intentionally finding these women and so then all of the quote-unquote good women i ain't got time for that we never do it are the ones that are over here looking like well you know what maybe i should go get a bbl you know maybe i should go ahead and uh pop that thing for real one time like that's the type of stuff that you have them thinking. So all the women that aren't participating in these things exactly, you aren't even paying attention to because you don't actually even care. Like, so let's just stop the bullshit. Thank you so much. Next case. Some people were like, what about WAP? <laughs> I feel like this concept is always like, it always goes over a certain people's head. There's a difference between autonomy and objectivity, right? So autonomy is when you do it. Objectivity is when somebody else does it to you, right? So when we think about women in particular we've always been seen as objects like when you think about the dowry and the way that system is set up when you think about the way people do kingdoms and how they join them together it was through women like and through marriage and stuff like that so women have not had this autonomy over their body and so meg the stallion and cardi b and anybody and everybody else whether it was a uh, little kim or trina or Nicki minaj anybody else that do that that's autonomy that's you doing that with your body but when it comes to other people doing that that's the objectification of them. I already know they're gonna be something. Well, shoot, sure, you know what? If y'all was objectifying me, it wouldn't be no problem. I'll take that. Of course, you've been conditioned to be one. Men have been conditioned to lust after women and to chase women. Meanwhile, women have been taught to keep y'all off and defend y'all off as though y'all are wolves in sheep clothing. We've been raised two different ways. And people are like, oh, well, y'all see nudity and all these pains and stuff like this in, in museums and stuff like that. But first things first, when it comes to art and all these things and seeing this nudity, you see it where? A museum, right? Like there's a housing for this. There's a space where this art lives. You have to pay to go in to see this art and to explore and have these conversations and stuff like that. If I saw that painting and, or if I saw that, that piece in a museum somewhere, wouldn't think twice about it, wouldn't really matter. But y'all let's actually talk about these, these paintings that y'all so dying to like talk about and bring to the conversation. Harry Mount went to the If Risque Museum to find out about the nakedness in the British Museum and found that some of these pieces are not of the Assyrians, those that were before the Greeks, but their enemies. In fact, they were naked with their heads cut off, but the Assyrians themselves were clothed because they, and many before the Greeks, viewed nakedness as a sign of weakness for losing a battle. However, according to the director of the museum, Neil McGregor, the Greeks saw this as an heroic stake. So nakedness meaning is subjective to the times. Keep in mind that the Greeks were not always naked. McGregor said, such as when they were doing the shopping or eating a meal, but they were naked in the gym. In fact, the word gymnasium comes from the Greek word gymnos, meaning naked. Yeah, and so in, in them statues, you know, they had a mixture of like olive oil and dust and they call it boy oil. Like, so how many of y'all are like ready to strip down and you know, go ahead and play football? since y'all want to bring it into the conversation. That's what I thought. Moving right along. When, now, when it comes to black women and nudity and art, it historically hasn't been done in a tasteful manner. It's been the Sarah Bartman's, it's been the Mammy, it's been derogatory. That's just how it has been historically. And it's, uh, next. So the artist. A lot of people are like, well, the artist is black. What do you got to say to that? I feel like, should I be mad at the artist? Like, that's also another person on my list. So, so far we got the bus and we got the artist. So I'm looking at both of them. I'm just curious as to why she painted them this way. Like, she has the range. I've seen work that she's done before and she's created pieces that are thought provoking, of course, but also that have an array of women. Like, people in the strip club and even Cardi will tell you, like, she, you know, got money because she got butt and everything or whatever, but she has to enhance herself. And so it's like, the women in the strip club 
are it's an array of women. Actually, it's a lot of um, white owned strip clubs. Like there, there's a period. There's just an array of people in strip clubs. There's white women. There's black women. There's Latino women. There's the um, mixed race people in there and everything. Like there's so many people in the strip clubbing, but you only chose to deliberately put black women and a black woman with colored hair is also on there. And I'm just like. Mm. Why would she do that? And I'm like, was she commissioned to do it in a specific way? Because if you can tell her to take the women off of some of them, then you could also tell her how to paint the women on some of them. You get what I'm saying? Like, I just think that it could have been deliberately done. Either way it go, I don't like it. I don't care who painted it. I don't like it. Another one was how people were talking about censorship and being sensitive. And so some people were like, oh, well, women ain't speak enough enough about stuff like this. And people were like back in the day and da da da. And I'm just like, how many of y'all really know about the parent music resource? They were established back in 1985. And it was like, they had like this list, like 15 songs. And they were like, oh, these are terrible songs for kids to be listening to. Um, there's something needs to be done. They need to take this stuff off. And a lot of the songs they were talking were like rock. Um, and of course, Prince made the list with Darling Nikki. <laughs> so they had this conversation. They had these things and they had these issues and everything. And they cared. And what came from that? The parental advisory sticker. Now, mind you, it was optional, but it definitely came about. But then also, referencing Boyz Watkins again and their whole conversation, when the, the lady that was on there was talking about um, how this reminded her of C. Dolores Tucker. And I'm like, okay. I don't see an issue. C. Dolores Tucker was a 67 year old woman who up until this time was known for marching with Martin Luther King on Bloody Sunday in Selma and becoming the first African American to serve as a Pennsylvania Secretary of State in 1971. But most people know her as the most hated woman in hip hop. The same doggy style album y'all keep referencing is the reason she speaks out. Back in 1996, Chuck Phillips did an interview with her for the LA Times and found out she never stopped the distribution of any music, like people had claimed. Then people came after her on a personal and business level. They want me to back off, but I won't. Tucker said in a phone interview from the headquarters of her Washington-based nonprofit, the National Political Congress for Black Women. It's important to pay attention to who is dredging up all these charges. Remember, these are the same people who are out here pimping pornography to your children. Their record and records speak for them. I've been an activist all my life. My records speak for itself. I'm just trying to figure out if she's saying the same thing y'all are saying as the reasons why women shouldn't be mad, but she was saying this back then, and doing the same thing as the parent music resource did, how did she end up with lyrics written about her like, Dear Miss Dolores Tucker, you keep stressing me, effing with a MF in mind. I figured you wanted to know, to know, you know why we call them HSBs. It's strictly business, baby, strictly business, instead of some sort of change. And so I'm trying to see in the situation, the difference between the parent music resource and what C. Dolores Tucker said, the only thing I'm seeing difference is there's a white woman that said something in the first one and there's a black woman that said something in the last one. The white woman got some action I, and the white woman in that situation was Al Gore's wife. But in this situation, it's a black woman that is marched with Martin Luther King. I don't know. Now, the last thing I wanted to say was for everybody and it was like, oh, y'all too sensitive. I hate this term so, so much. I hate this phrase so much because it's dismissive. And I'm like, listen, you don't have to be dismissive to disagree. It's completely okay if you listen to this whole thing and you like, girl, I don't like anything. I don't agree with nothing you got to say. I don't like none of that, da, 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 da. And I'm just like, listen, <laughs> my last person be mad at Meek himself. <laughs> and it's just like, listen, I can say I don't like what Meek did. I don't like this. I don't like what his team let fly. I don't like how he was still promoting it just so happily on his on you know Instagram and everything else, even if he don't have control. Because we have one lady uh, that last lady that mentioned Dolores, uh, see Dolores Tucker was talking about how he's you know go after the monster or after the machine and not after him. Yeah, he but he's still flying it out here or whatever it is, and I don't like it at all. But we don't have to agree. You can have your own opinion. It's completely okay for you to disagree with, with anything I post, anything I have to say. It's completely okay for you to have your own mind. I prefer it that way. That's how you can have dialogue. However, we can't have dialogue if you're being dismissive. If you don't have the ability to actually reason, then simply say that. That's okay. I know I can't have that conversation with you, but you don't have to be dismissive to disagree. <laughs> it kills me that a lot of people say that, especially in particular like men when we're having this conversation. If you don't have the ability to articulate your emotions at this moment, that's perfectly fine, but I do. 
and I'm going to, even if you try to dismiss me, but I wouldn't do that if I was you. And you've seen how far this gotten you all. Y'all were taught to man up instead of actually being allowed the space to process your emotions and tell how you felt and learn what was going on with you and how you got, like some of y'all are afraid to open up to women, let alone a therapist, and you see where that has us now. We're trying to do this and you're like, oh, I'm trying it. Yeah, but if you had to learn on the front end that basically your parents and whoever else conditioned you to be this way told you this as a means to you're being too sensitive. The same way white people told black people when they want to try and make Jim Crow era and all that and all them jokes and stuff like that. You're being too sensitive, y'all Y'all being too sensitive same way in this situation and it does nothing for your mental health it doesn't do anything to help you you can't be healing and learning about your emotions and stuff as an individual if you're being dismissive of other people that's evidence of the fact that you haven't grown actually i honestly didn't know nothing about this because a lot of men that i watch and follow do not participate in such actions <laughs> they don't carry themselves this way ladies make sure you have an array of men around you so you can see the world and not be boxed in to think all men think this way all men do not think this way i promise you that so yeah that's it Feel free to let me know how you feel about the art and you're in the comment section. If you're trying to attack me or black women, I'm not going to engage. I'm good for not engaging in comments that are like disrespectful. So uh, you can argue with yourself in the comment. But yeah, until next time, guys, know that Kiki loves you and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.